about 150 demonstrators turned out at Fulbeck this morning after a tip-off that the Nirex contractors would attempt to get onto the site. The protesters agreed to allow Ministry of Defence police access to the former airfield. But then, shortly before 11 o'clock, the convoy of contractors arrived. Good morning. Uh, will you please move aside and allow us to enter the site to get on with our, our work? This, is this time they were met with stony silence. Back? and still the demonstrators refused to move. You take it that you are not prepared to move. Following their unsuccessful attempt to gain access to Fulbeck and other shortlisted sites, it's thought Nirex is now considering legal action in the civil... ...have blocked engineers wanting to start test drilling. Day three of the siege of Fulbeck, and as the contractors' convoy approached, the villagers were prepared with a new strategy. Their barrister had advised them to say absolutely nothing, which made this the most peaceful of protests. Good morning. Uh, will you please move aside and allow us to enter the site to get on with our, our work? Will you please move aside? Once again, the protesters refused to budge. But the contractors for the nuclear industry radioactive waste executive made clear they're not giving up either. We're leaving now. Um, we will return and seek to enter the site. For how long? As long as we feel necessary. I think we'll keep them off unless uh, they, they really force their way on by either legal or physical means. Chief Superintendent, how much longer are the police going to allow the people to, to block this entrance here? It isn't really a civil police matter because the highway has been defined and the people are not on the highway now. They're on privately owned property and it's a matter for the owners of the property to determine just how long they will stay there. So as far as the police are concerned, the villagers can keep coming up and as forming their barricade? As far as the Lincolnshire police are concerned, provided there is no demonstration or no blockage of the highway, then it is a matter for the owners of the land. A spokesman for Nirex said they'd not be taking legal action before the weekend at the earliest. Meanwhile, a softly, softly game is being played. While it's farming as usual on the proposed site, villagers are getting more organised. Today there was a crash for protesters' children, and they're improving their radio system for monitoring contractors' well, movements. Sure, Underlying the good humour, though, is deep anxiety about what nuclear waste could do to this community if there was a leakage into the water supply. Unfortunately, germplasm, that is, um, egg cells and sperms, are more affected by radioactivity than other cells, so they can be damaged, so there is a risk to children being born with defects, and one doesn't know for how long this effect will last. The Fulbeck protesters are a growing coalition, ranging from tweed to punk. Their demonstrations have been the biggest of any of the four proposed sites in Britain. But today, as they broke their silence to cheer their latest victory over Nirex, they also knew they have a long way to go to win the war. Next week, their leaders are to meet Nirex's managing director. Nuclear dumping had been manning their barricade all night after being tipped off that Nirex were planning to try again to gain access to the former airfield. By mid-morning, almost 150 protesters had gathered at the entrance to the site. First to arrive were the Ministry of Defence Police, and after negotiations with land officials, they were allowed in. The protesters spent the next few hours singing their own special protest song, while speculation over whether the contractors would appear continued. Then, shortly before 11 o'clock, the convoy of contractors' vehicles arrived to be met by a human wall blocking their path. Good morning. Uh, will you please move aside and allow us to enter the site to get on with our, our work? This time they were greeted with silence, a new will tactic adopted by aside. the protesters after taking legal advice. You take it that you are not prepared to move. We're leaving now. Um, we will return and seek to enter the site. For how long? As long as we feel necessary. 
Is this part of some build-up to legal action that you have to come here a number of times and be refused entry? I can't comment on that. But are you running out of patience? No, we're not running out of patience. But... Nirex say if they can't gain access to the site, it'll be impossible to rule it out of the short list of four possible locations for a dump. Meanwhile, land are investigating a legal loophole which may bar Nirex from the airfield and the group says they're willing to go on manning the barricades indefinitely. As you saw, there's an awful lot of people here today. I think it's going to take a long, long time to wear, wear us down. If they do get onto the site, could you see further, more militant action perhaps? Uh, I, I can't see them getting on the site at this uh, state of play. If they do get on the site? Uh, I just can't see them getting on, can you? Nevertheless, the prospect of legal... For the protesters. As they dig in for a long siege, they're having a telephone installed. It's near the entrance to the disused airfield, which could become a nuclear waste dump. Earlier, a now familiar cat and mouse game was played out. And as the contractor's convoy drew up, they found the villagers more confident than ever. Protesters believe legal precedent set by the Critchell Down case 30 years ago means farmers must be given a chance to buy this Ministry of Defence land. So the contractors made their fourth retreat this week and Nirex looks much more likely to go to court. I should imagine they will be taking the advice of their legal representatives either Thursday or Friday and we may encounter a court order on either of those days. What's going to happen then? Then uh, it will be possibly civil disobedience. We will be sitting and standing in the road. Certainly we're not going to resort to violence. If we resorted to violence, it would be an absolute waste of all the effort and campaign we've made to date. Meanwhile, daily demonstrations throughout the week are beginning to hit the villagers' pockets. There's at least 200 we estimate today, and this is a working day for an awful lot of these people. So, so a lot of people are losing a lot of money over Well, some have taken the holiday. I'm self-employed, so nobody's actually going to sack me, but um, I, I, you know, I could get to get, like to get back to earning a living sometime, but um, we'll have Pressure's out. obviously building up then on people. I mean, how long can you keep this up? Well, some people rather think this is rather more important than just, you know, the pound or two that they might be losing while they're here. Six other entrances to the old airfield are all blockaded. The Norex contractors would have to trespass and cross a deep ditch if they sought to sidestep the protesters. The focus remains the main gate. One radio station now has a satellite studio there. As they wait for the Nirex convoys, the villagers run a sweepstake to guess its arrival time. Today's winner was announced by the rector of Fulbeck. If Nirex does seek an injunction, the stakes will be considerably higher. On the eve of the... villagers, Mike Morley reports. More than 150 local villagers formed an umbrella-waving barricade to prevent contractors entering the disused airfield at Fulbeck. For the fifth time, members of the nuclear waste executive were met with silent but solid opposition. Good morning. I ask you again, will you please move aside and allow us to come through? Will you please move aside? Afterwards, Action Group spokesman Trevor Cartwright warned even court orders couldn't move them now. That presents us with a slight difficulty, but I think we intend to pursue a course of civil disobedience. In what kind of way? What steps would you take if they did that? Uh, passive resistance. We'd block the roads with people sitting down and uh, make it as awkward as possible we could for them. Torrential rain time have turned away contractors sent to carry out test drilling. The Anorak army assembled in the early morning drizzle, awaiting the now daily ritual of attempts by contractors to enter the disused airfield at Fulbeck. In the downpour, families huddled together and youngsters practiced protest songs taught them by parents. Home you by Frontline troops ring the airfield armed with CB radio, an advance guard to notify demonstrators when the enemy came in sight. Meanwhile, there was chance to go through the day's drill routine. OK, are you ready? Lower the brollies. For the fifth time in ten days, contractors from the nuclear industry research executive turned up in convoy. As before, they were met by a silent but solid wall of opposition. Morning. Ask you again, will you please move aside and allow us to come through? Will you please move aside? Once more, Nirex contractors turned away, choosing not to test the strength of this morning's umbrella barricade. We are still uh, attempting to come on site in the same manner. We're all very reasonable people, members of land are reasonable people, and I hope that uh, reason can prevail at the end of the day.
The cheers of victory came from demonstrators as the contractors started to drive off. Will the next step be legal action? I can't comment on that at the moment. But legal action is what members of Lincolnshire against nuclear disarmament fear will come next. Uh, they may force their way on with court orders. That presents us with a slight difficulty, but I think we intend to pursue a course of civil disobedience. In what kind of way? What steps would you take if they did that? Uh, passive resistance. We'd block the roads with people sitting down and uh, make it as awkward as possible we could for them. And if they actually got on, would you block them on? We possibly would maintain, you know, maintain a blockage. I mean, at the moment, they're trying to get three vehicles on the airfield. They need to, f uh, need to bring on the drills. They need to maintain fuel for those vehicles. They need to get the samples off. We will make it as awkward as we possibly can for them. The wet, now familiar banners were rolled up and taken away at the end of what had been another dignified, almost over-friendly confrontation. But all the pleasantries, the polite chats between protesters and police could prove very different after tomorrow night's meeting between both sides. Then it's expected Nirex will announce those plans to seek court orders to have villagers thrown off the airfield. In the region, they've already made several attempts to start drilling at South Killingholm on Humberside and Fulbeck in Lincolnshire. Now they're taking their case to the law courts. Today's announcement came as the agency made yet another attempt to enter the field. Neil Bennett reports. We're going to do the standard rundown to fall back again, um, straight down the A1, along the A17, and into Straggleport. 8.30 a.m., a geologist Dr. Dr. Robert Chaplow assembles his team for their seventh attempt to start test drilling at Fallback. Eventually, several of these rigs will have to be moved onto the site to test its suitability. But as yet, the contractors can't get anywhere near it because protesters always stop them. Whilst we appreciate the concerns of the local people and their rights to demonstrate these concerns, we are being prevented by their actions from undertaking our lawful tasks. And obviously we are concerned about this. Before setting out, the contractors make their usual call to the Lincolnshire police. We will be arriving on site about half past ten, quarter to eleven time. Okay? They've made the journey down the A1 enough times now to know exactly what to expect at Fulbeck. And sure enough, the protesters had mustered at the main entrance to deny them access yet again. This time, they wanted some answers to some technical questions. Will you specify before drilling commences the basic factors which will constitute an absolute counter-contraindication counter for this site? <laughs> that is a very difficult question. This polite exchange continued for some minutes before the contractors had to admit defeat again. Will you please give us access to the site? You have refused access again. With their contractors' work further delayed, Nirex announced today that at both Fulbeck and South Killingholm, they'd now be going ahead with legal action to get onto the sites. So wouldn't it be better for protesters to let them get on with it and end the uncertainty? No, because we feel that whatever they find there, they will say that's just what we wanted. And so we're going to make life as difficult as possible for them until they go away. But they might well eliminate Fulbeck if they're allowed to go on and start their drilling. We don't trust them. We just don't trust them. Protesters can expect more attempts to gain access to the Fulbeck site. Meanwhile, lawyers acting for Nirex will be studying the whole question of injunctions, and they're expected to go to court within a couple of weeks. Demonstrators have always said they'll take whatever measures they can to prevent work at Fulbeck, but they won't defy the law.